Welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These are the best lessons that you are ever going to receive. I know you say I say that every time, but this is a new message that the Lord has taught me that I want everyone to know that they can have His inheritance through the gift of Jesus Christ. And you all have to stay with us on these lessons because they, it, he has so much for us that we as believers are the richest people in the world. And the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. You have to understand this. This is the only hope of this world is the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel means good news. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So in John 1, 29, he says, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins, the sin, S-I-N, not S, the sin of the world. This is for every person in the world. And as we read these in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the first one we're going to have today is eternal salvation. Eternal salvation. And this is the only way that anyone can get to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 4. Six. This book is all about Christ. Everything in here is about Him. And this is something we must get back to the Word of God. There is no hope for this world apart from the Word of God. We are to live by it. This is a heavenly divine message. And this is a heavenly divine calling. And it is a heavenly divine worship. And we're going to see this in these lessons. So for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Now as you receive this gift, of eternal life. This is what we have. Hebrews 5, 9. Eternal salvation. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, every one, everywhere. This salvation is for the world. The only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. His grace is sufficient for every need. And then we see in Hebrews 2, Verse 9, but we see Jesus for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death 
for every man, every person in the world. He has died instead of you. So let me ask you a question. Do you fear death? This is the greatest fear today of every person. And you do not have to fear death because in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now this is our inheritance as a son of God. This is our inheritance in Revelation 21, 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We see the sonship, the heir of sonship. And we will not go into that on this lesson, but we're going to have eternal redemption, eternal spirit, and eternal inheritance. These are the lessons that is needed for the world today so that you will realize how rich you are in Christ. God transferred the sin of the world. This is every person that's listening. Your sin and my sin to Christ. Your sin and my sin to Christ. This is what he wants every person to know. John 17, 3. This is life eternal, that we may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is a supreme being. Christ is a supreme being. He is appointed heir of all things. He is the head of all things. He is the head of the body of believers. And this is how we inherit everything that is His, because we are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. There is not a person in this world today that could not be rich by just receiving this gift of eternal life. This is what God has called me for, every person to hear this message. And you will receive the riches of all the world. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for Thy Word. We thank Thee for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. We thank Thee and praise Thee that our Heavenly Father has given us His Son, and we thank Thee that Christ has given us His blood, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher and dwells within our bodies, a temple of the Holy Spirit. We have prayed for 100-fold all these years, and this is the most important lesson for the world today. Thank Thee for saving 100-fold today. Bless each person that is listening. May they get on their knees right now and confess their sins and have godly repentance and have the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom that we will live holy as He has commanded us to live. And we thank Thee and praise Thee for all that's listening. And we're rejoicing that we are one in Christ through the Spirit of God. Thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. We thank Thee that we're into the holiest by the blood with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Thee that by faith right now, they can receive this gift. 
Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're seeing now in the last days that we're living what we have in Christ. And this has to be told to the whole world because 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are one in Christ. And He is the head of the body of believers. And He is the source of all life. He's the creator of all things. He's the source of all life and all intelligence. There is no wisdom, nor counsel, nor understanding against our Lord. We can do nothing against this truth. We can do nothing. Every word is going to be fulfilled exactly the way God has given it to us. And it never has changed. And this book is the living word. Jesus Christ is the living word. Psalm 12, 6. This is the most important thing. This word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. It's the only instruction and guidance we have in this world. The only instruction and guidance that we have. So here we see we have eternal salvation. And the reason we asked, do you fear death? Well, this is why so many people, this is their question. What is going to happen to them at death when they take their last breath? And God's Word teaches us in Hebrews chapter 2. For as much then, chapter 2, verse 14, for as much then as the, ch as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, he conquered death on the cross. You, as a believer, will never die. But listen at verse 15. Now, this is the whole world today. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If you have fear, that is from Satan, and you do not have fear as a child of God. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. This is your inheritance today. The fear of the world today has to have perfect peace. His perfect peace is our inheritance. His perfect peace was produced by the Holy Spirit. And that is our next lesson, eternal redemption, then eternal spirit. Eternal redemption is Hebrews 9, 12. By his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for you, the whole world. And this is, once again, Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we go back to Ephesians, and we're going to see in Ephesians our inheritance at the very beginning of Ephesians. Now, Ephesians and Colossians, they embody the highest revelation that God has given to man. So in Revelation, we saw that we, now listen at this, 
Revelation 21, 7, He that overcometh, now that is only believers, shall inherit all things. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Then, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Also in Ephesians 1, verse 12, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Here we see in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. This is our inheritance in whom we have redemption. This is how we know that we are a child of God. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed until the day of redemption. That's when our bodies are going to be redeemed. We're going to meet him in the clouds. You're going to see all of these wonderful promises that he has for us. The next event for all true believers is the rapture because the crucifixion atones our sins with the blood of Christ. This is the most important thing. You must know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. First Peter, now you must write these down, First Peter 1, 18 and 19. You must write these down because you must, we must get back to the Word of God. We must get under the blood and believe that's the only way that our sins can be forgiven. The Spirit of God comes upon us and He implants that blood into our bodies, and our bodies become a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the only way that any person can get to heaven, and that means being born again by the Spirit of God in John 3, verse 3, and John 3, verse 5. This is what the world needs today, and I want you to know that this will be on my website, this lesson will be GloriousMessage.com. You can copy all of my videos that I have because I am here to do what God has called me to do, and He's opened the door to go into the whole world to preach the gospel to every creature. And you, as a child of God, can have part in everything that he does through me. Because I don't do this for money. I do this for the glory of God. This has been his heavenly calling. He called me. And now, I want you to have part in this by taping every, every lesson and giving it out to another person. This is the unity that he desires us to have. So here we see in Hebrews 10, 4, this is amazing what we can see in just these few things that he's given us. 10, 10, I'm sorry. Chapter 10, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse 14, chapter 10, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. 
we are one in Christ. Sanctification, that's what that means. We're one in our Heavenly Father. Now, this is why we must understand that this is a, we have our great high priest in heaven. He is at the throne of grace. He died on the cross. He ascended back into heaven. And he is at the throne of grace, at the right hand of the throne of majesty, praying night and day for each of us. And the one thing you must always understand, that this is your inheritance. And then the next thing, while I'm here in Hebrews, we have his divine protection. Listen at this. While I'm here in this, I'm just getting ahead of myself, but I will give it to you again. Are they not all ministering spirits, the angelic host, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? We have the angelic host watching over us because we are heirs of his salvation. That's just a little extra that you get today before we get to our inheritance. And then God forsook Christ on the cross. Remember, Christ said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God forsook Christ on the cross instead of forsaking us. Our substitute judged in our Place. Now remember, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every person that's living, and Acts 17, I'm not going to get there today, but Acts 17 teaches us that we are all one blood in Adam. Everybody is the same in God's sight. Now, Jew and Gentile, we are one as a body of believers. This is the most important thing for every person in the world, that we love each other the way God loves each of us. And then Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This is something that every person in the world can See his great love through these lessons and what all that he has poured out upon us, bestowed blessings upon us daily. And then we're going to see his divine glory. First Corinthians 2, chapter 10, verse 10 through 16. First Corinthians. Now this, I'm not going to read all of these verses, but you have to understand that you cannot understand this book apart from the Spirit of God. We worship in spirit and in truth. So he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, but which the Holy Spirit teachers teaches comparing spiritual with spiritual. The revealed things are taught in words given by the Spirit. So this is why we must understand that we cannot understand this book apart from the Spirit of God. We must be born again. So then, redemption is holy of God. Redemption is entirely from God. Redemption is through a person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he was the Son of God. He always has been the Son of God, but he had to become man to die. He is from eternity to eternity. You must believe in the virgin birth. You must believe that he is the Son of God, and he is the son of man because he had to become man to die. And we'll find out more about the Spirit of God that came upon Mary with, his, with this divine blood and gave us Christ 
through the same Sp Holy Spirit that saves us and brings us out of darkness into light. And then redemption is by blood. He hath washed us from our sins in his own blood, Revelation 1, 5. And by power, by power, redemption is from the guilt of sin. You cannot have guilt and be a child of God because he remembers your sin no more. And he's delivered us the redemption from the power of sin. Romans 8, 2 the law of the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Remember in 1 Peter, and we'll see this next week, but I just, I just want you to understand what he says in 2 Peter, but I want to read 1 Peter if I can, but I will do that next week, so you have to tune in next week. Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partaker of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then, I have to give this to you, this is the very last thing, our inheritance is that he has our res, re, we have his, he has uh, for each of us our inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Our reservation is already made in heaven. That is our inheritance. This is what he has. And he says, this is a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is Second Peter. This is, you've got to have this, First Peter 1, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away. Your reservation will be made in heaven as soon as you receive this gift. What glory he has for us. The heavens declare the glory of God, and everything in this earth belongs to us as a child of God.